Hello everyone. Today we will look at one of the most populated, very randomly used and a complete bioinformatics resource which was initiated during the onset of the Human Genome Project and has contributed towards the development of the subject of bioinformatics and computational biology and that is the NCBI database or data warehouse. Now NCBI stands for National Center for Biotechnology Information and it is located under the National Institute of Health at Bethesda, USA. Now, why do we access NCBI? We access NCBI because it provides us with the opportunity to search multiple databases at a time or with a single keyword. So, and what you can see here is the home page of NCBI and in this home page if you see that there is a tab called all databases. So, if I click on this tab you will find that it displays all the individual data repositories that is housed under the umbrella database NCBI. So, you have genome assemblies, you have bio collections, you have bio projects and bio samples which are specific for next generation sequencing based experiment, you have biosystems, you have books, clinical variations, conserved domains in terms of proteins, DB gap, DB var to analyze genome variation, gene which is a collection of specific genes and information regarding specific genes from different organisms, genome which is self explanatory. GEO data sets and GEO profiles, so gene expression omnibus G data sets and gene expression omnibus profiles, homologene, identical protein groups, NLM catalog, nucleotide collection, online Mendelian inheritance in man, OMIM database, PubMed central which is a collection of bibliographic uh, literature and scientific bibliographic literature proteins, protein clusters, protein family models, so on and so forth. It also houses PubChem which is often used by people who are working in computer drug discovery etc. Apart from that it also contains PubMed which is again uh, extension of your PubMed central and again is a uh, bibliographic collection related mostly to medical literature. Uh, we have the sequence read archive which is one of the largest collection of raw sequence reads that are being generated from the various uh, next generation sequencing based projects that are going on around the world. We have structure, we have taxonomy, we have the toolkits etc. So, you can understand that the NCBI database is actually a collection of multiple databases and hence you can always refer to such a particular collection as a data warehouse because it houses or it gives you access to multiple databases at using one particular graphical user interface. So, this is these are the different databases that are there in NCBI. Now, suppose if we want to search NCBI, suppose we are looking for a particular molecular entity 
and we are trying to identify what is the uh, presence or what information NCBI can provide us with. So let us uh, start our search with a very uh, common term. For example, let us use the term glutathione peroxidase. We all know that glutathione peroxidase is a stress enzyme and uh, it is definitely a stress enzyme that is present in mammalian systems as well as in other organism systems as well. So if we click on search, let us click on search and let us identify or find out what kind of results we get. So here you can see immediately that you are redirected to a result page which shows that your search term which is glutathione peroxidase has been found in 26 out of the different databases that are housed in NCBI. And you can see here one of the highlighted results that you have found uh, or you have been directed to is glutathione peroxidase from bacteria and this is a specific entry which is uh, bacteria specific. Now if you browse down you will find that the 26 databases that were mentioned in the first line you can take a look at the different databases where the term glutathione peroxidase has been found. So you can see the literature specific databases bookshelf, medical subject headings, NL National Library of Medicine catalog, PubMed, PubMed Central. You have a huge hit number of hits in this particular category. In case of genes and the gene centric databases you have this number of hits in specific categories. In case of proteins you have this number of hits. If you go down further you have genome, you have clinical uh, data which pertains to glutathione peroxidases, you have PubChem uh, and uh, chemical databases, so bioassays, compounds, pathways and substances. You find that compounds and pathways you do not have any hits but in case of substances and bioassays you do find hits. So this interface that you can see here is referred to as the interface of entrees or ENTREZ. Entrees or entrees, if you can pronounce it in either way, uh, is actually a search engine. Just like we have Google where we can directly put in some keywords and Google provides us with uh, the necessary hits that the keywords pertain to. Just like Google in NCBI, NCBI has its own Google and that is nothing but entrees or entrees and this allows you to search for all the in-house resources at one go. So our search regarding glutathione peroxidases have yielded this kind of a results. So you can use this uh, keyword based search engine and find out whatever uh, information that you need and if there are enough hits you will find that there is enough information in terms of the protein or the term that you have searched in NCBI. So this is one of our first sort of activities that we will search NCBI using a standard keyword set and identify what are the number of databases that our standard set provides us with. Uh, standard uh, keyword based search enables us to identify. So that is our activity one where we are looking to search for a specific using a specific set of keywords we are trying to search NCBI and identify what we are getting. So that is that is actually how we will proceed initially. Following that, we might search for a specific accession number. Now suppose we know an accession number and let me go back to this page 
and here again I go back to the home page where we have all the databases here and suppose me you are you have read a paper where you find that a group of uh, people have worked and they have either sequenced a gene or they have sequenced a protein and they have deposited that sequence information in NCBI and if they have deposited the sequence information in NCBI then those submitters have been provided with an accession number which is nothing but a unique ID which enables the relational database management system which is sort of the back end to your NCBI database to pinpoint that particular sequence which you are searching. So for that remember in our first search example we had used a set of keywords or specific keywords which we were using as an example. Here instead of keywords we will be using the specific accession number and for that I am giving you an example of that using an accession number which we had uh, provided and we had submitted uh, way back in 2007. Let me just type it here it is EF620778. So this is an accession number which I know because uh, I had submitted this to NCBI long back. So let me click on search and you will be able to understand the difference between a keyword based search and a accession number based search. So let me click on search and let NCBI do its work. So here you can see that the keyword based search if you remember had yielded results in 26 databases. Here since I have specified an accession number you find that it is giving you a hit in only two databases and as you can see here all the other databases that you had hits for your keyword based search now is not giving you any sort of a result. Only you are getting a result in your nucleotide collection and you are getting a result in identical protein groups. So if you click on nucleotide collection result, let us see what we get here. <coughs> so this is the result page of the nucleotide database and as you can see this has opened up a GenBank file. So here there are plenty of information that is available in terms of the sequence that was submitted. So first let us look at the definition. Here you can see that it is ricinus communis glutathione peroxidase gene partial CDS. So in, we know that we had submitted a partial coding sequence. Source ricinus communis castor bean organism under organism you have the taxonomic position of ricinus who are the submitters so these were this is myself and my group of co-workers who had submitted this particular sequence who had submitted it or if at that point of time we did not have an accompanying publication where we had actually mentioned this particular accession number. So here you see instead of the journal title we had put in the institution from which we had submitted the sequence. Then if you move along you will find that the location or the qualifiers or features of the sequence is mentioned. Here there is an entire range so you know that there are 561 positions in this particular sequence. You have the mRNA or the product which is which has been categorized from 1 to 524. Since we had 
identified this particular glutathione peroxidase from ricinus which was growing in a particular place which was laden with lead contamination. So, we had put in a note that this glutathione peroxidase which was which we found to be overexpressed was getting over expressed during lead accumulation in ricinus and our experiments at that point of time had shown us that there was excess lead accumulation in ricinus communis. So, you can see here this particular protein ID is has been generated by NCBI itself. Why? Because we had submitted the nucleotide sequence only. We had not done any protein sequencing experiment. So, what they have done? They have predicted the mRNA from the range that they found of in our submission and they have predicted this particular protein to be encoded by that particular open reading frame. So, this is the corresponding protein now in terms of the sequence that we had submitted. If you move up then you find that there are two options FASTA and graphics. Now, if you want to work with this particular sequence, a majority of web based uh, systems or databases only allows you to submit or use FASTA sequences. So, if you click on FASTA, you will find that a different page is opening and here you find that only the sequence is getting displayed and the FASTA format is specified by this initial greater than sign which is followed by your accession number followed by a very brief description of the biomolecule the sequence of which has been submitted and then it is followed by your sequence information. So, this FASTA file is a very very important uh, file format which you need to keep in mind if we, you are planning to use sequence based data for your experiments. So, this concludes our second activity in terms of NCBI that is searching NCBI using a accession number or specific accession number which obviously as you have seen through this video has given us a completely different kind of results in terms of if you compare them with what you have got when we searched NCBI using keyword based search. So, let us now move on to the SRA archive and here as you can see I have already put in a search term keyword based search term called gut microbiome. So, you know that what I am searching for since currently I, I do some work in term in gut microbiome, I, I am interested to know what are the different kind of gut microbiome studies that have been deposited in the SRA archive. The SRA archive as you remember I said initially was the archive or is the archive which houses information generated from next generation sequencing based experiments. So, you can see here that in terms of the results that we have got here gut microbiome uh, the search string the gut microbiome we have found 3,96,360 entries pertaining to our search term. And if you look on the left side panel you will find that this particular set of entries that we have been able to identify is further classified into several different types of experiments, tal conditions as well as different types of experimental protocols and platforms. So, for example, if you just look at the platforms, so these are these platforms indicate the different sequencing strategies that have been employed to generate the data which has subsequently been submitted. So, you can find ABI solid, BGI sec, capillary sequencing, complete genomics uh, option, Illumina, ion torrent, 
Oxford Nano 4, PacBio SMRT. So all these are different platforms that are current, some of them are currently used, some of them are subsequently not used with the advent of more advanced techniques. Uh, they are not being used at this point of time. So all these are specific platforms using which you can and the number in the parenthesis indicate the exact number of submissions which have been done which have used ABI solid platform, which have used Illumina platform, which have used Oxford Nanopore platform. So these are, these are all the different kind of information that you can access through this. And if you are just looking for gut micro, suppose you are, if you are, if you are interested to compare the results that you have got in, in your study with existing results. So one of the fundamental aspects of comparing genomics data is you have to choose uh, the same, same type of experimental protocol which you have used and you have to compare that same type of experimental protocol from others. So if you have used Illumina based sequencing platform, then you cannot compare Illumina sequencing results with the other sequencing platform results. So if you are trying to analyze the results together, taking into account your uh, set of sequences as well as the sequences that have been generated earlier, you have to compare, you cross platform comparison is very risky and has provided mostly erroneous results. So it is always advisable that you compare within the same platforms. So that is why the platform information is very important in terms of SRA. So if I, if I just click on this particular entry, let me just show you what kind of what an SRA entry looks like. So as you can see, this is completely different to the kind of entry which we found when we performed a keyword based search. And here you can see that this again gives you an example of mouse. So this has been obtained from mouse fecal matter. So the strategy is amplicon based sequencing, uh, Illumina MySec is the platform, V3, V4, the variable regions of the 16S rRNA have been targeted and the study is related to food allergy prevention in progeny by a prebiotic supplementation. So this is the premise of the study and here you can find that uh, it specifies the kind of strategy, the source, the selection of the library and the layout. And here is the run option. So run option in SRA gives you the access to the file. So if I click on run, you will find, let us see what clicking on run gives us here. So here you can see that you have again a lot of information. The main aspect is this aspect metadata analysis reads and data access. So let us click on, so this is metadata. So metadata as, as a term, metadata is something which we can describe as data describing data. So uh, you already know that this is a gut microbiome sample. What other information you can obtain from this particular segment? So you can again go back and understand the kind of information that are put in your metadata files such as this. So number of bases, the GC content, when it was published, uh, the access type public. So anybody can download this particular uh, set of sequences. If you click on analysis, then you will find that this analysis has been uh, discussed very clearly what is the number of unidentified reads, bacteria, the uh, phylum, from within phylum, what are the different types of uh, bacteria that is available, all the percentages are provided here, what are the strong signals, kilo base pairs, etc. Everything is provided in this particular uh, segment. So this is this uh, and you can go deeper into the analysis if you want you can go deeper and we can have a discussion regarding that later on. But currently we are just interested in identifying the different kind of uh, 
data and information that NCBI provides us with. So let us then go to reads. So here you will find that the number of reads that are present in your sample. So if you can click on here, if you go to next, you will find that the second read is getting displayed and so on. So this is, this is how the reads are arranged and as you can see their different nucleotides are present are provided in the color of their uh, potential peaks. If you are observing a chromatogram, then you will find that these are the colors which are used to represent this particular set of uh, nucleotides. So the color of the nucleotides are provided as peak colors. And then you go on to data access. So here, if you want to download it, how you can download this, you can directly click on this file and you can then download it. Remember that there are two files which you need to download since it is an Illumina based sequencing experiment. And Illumina based sequencing experiment always utilizes paired end reads. So you have an R1 file and an R2 file. So this both these files are important for subsequent analysis. So if you want to download this, then you can directly click on these segments and a file will start downloading which will be in your gun zipped format. And there are uh, various software and servers which you can then subsequently use to analyze these files which is not currently under the purview of this particular activity or experiment. So this is, this is how you can access SRA and how you can go ahead with the uh, data availability and check the data availability pertaining to your kind of experiment in your SRA. Then we go on to another interesting, interesting database which is the GEO datasets or gene expression omnibus. So if you are interested, suppose I have already again put in a set of keyword uh, to reduce time of internet activity and here you will find that I have put in a keyword called lung cancer. So lung cancer, uh, obviously you all know regarding the various prognosis of lung cancer uh, patients and the disease itself. Uh, so if you are interested in understanding the kind of uh, gene expression studies that have been performed. Now remember earlier if we just talked about gene expression studies, we would be talking about microarray based experiments. But with the advancement of genomics techniques, the microarray based experiments have been, uh, have been sort of, uh, there is a competition for microarray based experiments with uh, next generation sequencing based experiments and that comes under the purview of your RNA-seq experiments. So in GEO expression you will find that uh, yeah, you can actually find different kinds of uh, experimental uh, results that the uh, which provides you information regarding gene expression. So here if I just uh, if I just put in lung cancer and click on search, then you will find that this is the kind of results that you are getting 52,403 entries pertaining to lung cancer experiments. Now on the left hand side again, as you can see, so let us first look at the first result which will pro explain what I was saying earlier that you can see here the organism obviously is homo sapiens that type is expression profiling by high throughput sequencing. So this experiment has been performed using high throughput sequencing or it is an RNA-seq experiments. And hence you have, you can see here that this is clearly states that it is an expression profiling by high throughput sequencing. On the other hand, suppose you are not looking at uh, RNA sequencing based experiments. You are only interested in microarray data, data. You want to perform a microarray, go ahead with a microarray data analysis. So you on the left hand side again you find that you have the option of streamlining your data by just clicking on expression profiling by array. And if you click on that, see the number of experiments pertaining to lung cancer goes down drastically to 1042. So we started off with how many? We started off with over 50,000 results and if we are just interested in uh, getting data pertaining to experiments which are which have been performed using microarray based platforms then this is the number of experiments that we will find so 1042 experiments in terms of your geo 
you can then click on any of this particular say suppose I click on the first set and this sends you to the gene expression omnibus data set specifically where you can see that uh, you have the title of the experiment the organism from which uh, you have uh, the experiment has been performed a brief summary of the experiment itself and uh, if you have uh, if there is a publication then obviously there will be a citation in this particular segment this does not have a citation as yet and I could, you can see here that the platform again the similar kind of entries that we found in case of your SRA database here you find that the platforms are your Agilent microarray based platform so this is something which is very interesting in terms of the uh, kind of experiment that has been performed so this is in summary of how you can access the gene expression omnibus platform and that is something uh, which is sort of our third activity of searching and uh, finding a result in your gene expression omnibus platform so that is that is in summary uh, the kind of uh, search strings that we can use to access expression data now we come to the last segment of our NCBI based uh, searches or searching NCBI or accessing NCBI where we are we I will show you that NCBI still still today allows you to perform or refine your search using boolean operations. So again I go back to the initial search string that I had used for accessing NCBI and that was glutathione peroxidase if you remember in our first activity. Here what we are doing is here we are not searching all the databases since we know that glutathione peroxidase is an enzyme we are specifically searching the protein database so see I have selected the protein database from the all databases segment and here I have selected protein I have put in the keyword glutathione peroxidase and I have clicked on search so if I click on search this is the result that I am getting so you can see here they keep this number noted down 2,42,104 now suppose I do not want any partial proteins here so let me write not partial and then again click on search let us see what happens the number has come down so you can understand how many of the entries with the keyword glutathione peroxidase were actually partial in NCBI so that this is the new number from 2,42 it has come down to 1,78,568 so let us now extend our boolean operations to not predicted let us see if we can bring it down further yes you see that not huge change not a huge change but around 2000 entries have been reduced if you suppose do not want entries from fungi if you click on just write not fungi let us see what happens again there is a slight reduction let us just drastically reduce the number by writing not bacteria and again you click on that see the number has come down to thousands it started off with 2 lakhs now it is it has come down to 9062 and if you browse up you will find that this is search details contains the key search string that you have used right so this is how you your search string has been read by NCBI and you can use this same search string again and again until the database is updated and you will find that similar you are getting similar kind of results every time
Now, as soon as the database gets updated and there is more number of entries pertaining to glutathione peroxidase is being submitted in NCBI, then obviously the numbers will start to vary. But until the databases get updated, if you keep this search detail string copied and pasted in say a word file or a notepad file and you use it say two to three days later, you might come across with the same number of entries. So this use of Boolean operator is allowed in your NCBI search string and this is a very efficient method of reducing the number of entries or sort of pinpointing towards the kind of entries that you are actually searching for. So that is also part of your search or NCBI search and this is sort of activity 4 in terms of NCBI search. So this is uh, what we needed to do and you can obviously explore the different databases that are there in NCBI, understand the kind of data that they provide you and remember that PubMed and PMC provides you with a very good collection of articles which obviously you need to refer when you are performing a research and you are performing a, a review of literature for that particular research. So that also you can search and obviously you can use the same keyword say for example glutathione peroxidase to identify what kind of results you get in PubMed. So that can be part of your homework or activity 5. Okay? So now it is up to you to first perform the different kinds of searches that I showed you and then explore it, explore NCBI as you feel like. Thank you.